Hi, welcome back to Fantasy Ball Profits. My name is Rob Scooter. Thanks for joining me tonight. This is the Week 13 Start Sit video. Now, before I get into the information, I want to take a moment to thank all of you that have subscribed this year, that have watched our videos. We really appreciate it. My son and I started the site this fall, and we're really looking forward to the future. We're looking forward to next summer and the fall time. We want to continue to improve our product, improve our video quality, the information we bring new. And we're going to do that through you guys. As you get the word out there, continue to watch the videos and give us feedback on what you would like to see and what we can do to better improve serving you guys. So once again, thank you for, that, for all you that have subscribed. Continue to get the word out there. Uh, before we get into this information, the one thing that we really try to encourage viewers here is sticking to solid information. We try to stay away from hunches or feelings. We figure if you stick to the trends, uh, player information, stats, news, things like that, if you stick to solid information, 9 out of 10 times you're going to be okay. We always have to remember that there are always going to be what we call statistical anomalies, uh, times where players will buck the system, buck the trend, whatever. That's going to happen. A prime example is last week, Brett Hundley, the quarterback of the Packers, played Pittsburgh. Now going into that week, Pittsburgh had allowed the third fewest points to quarterback. So Everything would tell you to sit Hundley, who would struggle. Well, he goes out and has a great week. Those over 20 yards, three touchdown passes. What advice would I give you going back? Well, if I was going to go back and redo it, I'd give you the same advice to sit him. If you stick to solid information, nine out of 10 times, you're going to be okay and you're going to win your league. The other thing we tell you always, you have to take this information, you have to put the context of your league. There's so much that I don't know in terms of your scoring system, your player depth, who's on the waiver wire, things like that. So when I talk about maybe you need to sit a guy, maybe you can't because you just don't have anybody available out there. So maybe for you, sitting a guy simply means uh, start him, but lower your expectations. So take this, put in the context of your league. If you have specific questions, we would love to answer them. Put them on the bottom of start State video, and we'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. Now, the one thing I would say is I work Sunday mornings from about 9 to 12. And so if you want me to answer those questions, try to get them in before Sunday morning. Let's get to the first game of the week here. Dallas versus Washington. Take a look at the quarterbacks. Look at Dak Prescott. Well, uh, I thought maybe Dak could rebound this last week, but he hasn't. He's really, really struggled lately. In the last three games, he's got zero touchdown passes and five interceptions. The last time he played Washington, uh, he struggled. He had 7.23 points and no touchdown passes, so he's been a real mess. Ever since Ezekiel Elliott's been out, they have no play action. Defense is able to load the box, put pressure on the quarterback, and it's been a disaster. So at this point, playing Washington, who's pretty solid against the pass, I would say he's a guy that you just got to sit week 13, especially if you're somebody that's on the bubble that needs to win to get in. I wouldn't trust him. Now, there's a chance he rebounds this week, but can you take that chance when you look at how he's struggled? Um, first six of the weeks, he looked lights out, but since then, he's been a totally different quarterback. I would sit him. As far as Kirk Cousins go, he plays Dallas. Dallas gives up the seventh most points to quarterbacks. And right now, Cousins is playing really well. In fact, if you look at this time this year, he's got five games over five or over 300 yards passing, and his touchdown to intercept ratio is 19 to six. So he's a very safe play this week. You can play, and you can start Kirk Cousins and feel okay with that start. What about the running backs? It's like a Rod Smith and Alfred Morris now, both running backs for Dallas. Now, Rod Smith uh, emerged last week, and uh, so what does that do for the landscape there for the running backs for Dallas? Does that help hurt? Well, I think actually Rod Smith doing well really hurts both of them at this point. It'd almost been better if one of them got injured and they could rely on one because what's going to happen is not going to become Rod Smith's team here. Last week, they both had nine carries. And here's the thing, Alfred Morris, since Ezekiel has been out, has actually run pretty well. And so what you've got here is the dreaded running back by committee. Um, so where do you roll out with these guys? Well, um, I personally would probably sit both of them, honestly. If you're going to start one, I would give Rod Smith a slight edge simply because he's involved in the passing game. And that's what happened last game, too. They weren't able to really run the ball a lot with Morris because they fell behind. They had to throw the ball, and that made Rod Smith more of a relevant play. But both of those guys are in the running back by committee, therefore just devaluing both running backs. I would probably sit them both unless you're desperate. Uh, what about Samaj P. Ryan, the running back for Washington? He plays Dallas. Dallas gives up the 15th most points to running backs. Now, he struggled all year long. His yards per carry were brutal. He looked slow. He didn't look explosive. Then all of a sudden, last two weeks, this guy's running really well. Uh, in fact, uh, two weeks ago, he had 23 carries, 117 yards in the TD. And then last week, he had 24 carries for 100 yards. Between the two weeks, that is a 4.62 yards per carry. Um, he's looking really good. Now, he may step back a little bit. He may lose a little bit in terms of his effectiveness. But he's the guy that you have to seriously consider starting as a running back, too. And here's the reason why. Anybody who's getting the starting job that's going to get that many carries becomes relevant in fantasy terms. And right now, he's their only go-to guy. Chris Thompson's out for the year. Kelly's out. Plus, he's been ineffective. So, um, Samaj Pirine is a guy that you can start as a running back to this week. What about wideouts there? Well, let's take a look at Des Bryant. He's playing Washington, who gives up the six fewest points to wideouts. And he's got no touchdown passes in the last five games. And this year, he hasn't broke 100 yards again. So, he's a guy that's really struggling. 
Now, uh, Des Bryant is not a guy that you can trust. He's really fallen out of that running back one or wide receiver one conversation. Even really fallen down to maybe a wide receiver three conversation this week. That's where I kind of put him. Now, he's still Des Bryant. He still has potential. You probably don't want to sit him. But what I would say is he's playing Washington, who gives up the six boost points to wide out. He's going to see Josh Norman. So I would bump Des Bryant down to what I would call a wide receiver three play this week. Uh, I would sit the other Dallas wide receivers. None of them have any trustworthy value there. Let's look up to the Washington wide receivers. Jamison Crowder. He's playing the Cowboys. We get the four, fourth most points to wide receivers, so they give a lot of points to wideouts. And lately, uh, Jameson Crowder has really kind of found himself really near a lot of people going into this season. Thought he was a guy that could hit 1,000 yards, be productive. They lost Terrell Pryor. I'm sorry, they gained Terrell Pryor, but they had lost Jackson, and they lost Pierre Garçon. And so a lot of people felt those targets would fall into his lap. Early in the year, he struggled. But the last four games, he's really found himself. In fact, the last four games, he's been on fire. He's having 103 yards receiving the last four games. So I really like uh, Jameson Crowder in this one. Another one is Josh Dotson there. A former first-round pick is really starting to find himself also. He's got four TDs on the year. He's seen an increased role in that offense. And now he's the number two guy behind Jameson Crowder. And he kind of sits as a wide receiver 3-4 this week. So depending upon where you're at, what your needs are, the depth of your league, he's a wide receiver 3-4 to four this week. As far as tight ends go, Jason Witten, uh, Asia's really caught up to him at this point. He does have a good matchup, but his number's on the decline. And the way Dak Prescott's playing, uh, he's not a guy that I'd even consider a start. It's just too risky right now. As far as tight ends go, you got Vernon Davis and Jordan Reed as far as Washington tight ends. Um, last week, Davis seemed poised to have a big game. Reed was out. <clears throat> he had a great matchup. And uh, he disappointed a lot of owners. I know a lot of you would asked me, and we even said he was a good play. Everything seemed to look right. All the numbers seemed to appear that way. He'd been playing really well, had a great matchup. Jordan Reed was out, so he's poised for a big game. And then he goes out, and he puts a zero up. Sorry, it happens. It happens to all of us from time to time. He's got to shake that off and move on. Uh, Davis is still worth a start this week. Now, here's what I would say. Right now, it looks like Reed's going to miss another week. He missed practice today. And sounds like he's going to miss his, his fifth straight game, which means that Vernon Davis will be the only guy. And if that's what happens, if Reed misses the game and uh, Vernon Davis is your only guy there. Outside Vernon Davis, I think he's going to rebound. He's not going to get a zero again. That happens from time to time. Even the best wideouts, even the best tight ends, running backs have off games. I think he should rebound and be okay. You can be confident starting Vernon Davis. As far as kickers go, I would sit Bailey uh, until Dak figures it out. I don't trust him. And uh, Rose, the kicker for Washington, is a fair play. He's not a great play, but he's a guy you could play if you're really desperate. As far as defenses go, I would sit Dallas. And uh, Washington, you could start as kind of a middle-of-the-road defense. Uh, they're definitely somebody you could look at with Dak struggling at this point, but it's not a great defensive option. Let's look at the Vikings versus the Falcons this week. Let's look at Case Keenum in this one. Is he a guy that you could start or sit? Well, he's playing Atlanta, who gives up the 11th most points to quarterbacks. Now, he started slow this year. The first four games, Case Keenum was nothing to write home about. But now in the last four games, Case has really stepped up. In the last four games, he's averaging 289 passing yards. He's averaging 2.25 passing touchdowns per game. Got a nice group of receivers around him. He's got Thielen, Diggs, Rudolph, McKinnon. All those guys offer nice weapons. Got balance there. And the Vikings over the last four games have averaged 31.25 points per game. So that offense is really starting to move the ball and put points on the board. Another thing that, I think that bodes well for Case Kim is the fact that Matt Ryan's starting to play well, which means that he should also put points on the board, which could create a, a, a high-scoring game here. At least that certainly seems to be the way it is trending. And so uh, Case Kim's not a great start, but I think he's a more reasonable quarterback He's not a top 10 play by any stretch, but he's a what I call a fair, safe play if you need somebody at Case Keenum. Let's look at Matt Ryan. Well, he plays Minnesota, gives the 11th fewest points to quarterbacks. Now, um, Ryan has played well the last five games after starting very slowly. In the last five games, he's thrown nine touchdown passes, only two interceptions. But he is playing a very good defense, so don't expect a big day from Matt Ryan. I would suspect that about 250 yards, maybe one to two touchdown passes, it would be a reasonable play for him this week. As far as running backs go, let's look at Latavius Murray. Uh, he's got a decent matchup versus Atlanta defense. Now, he's got five touchdowns in the last five games. He's had seven consecutive games with double-digit carries. Latavius Murray has become a legitimate running back, too. He's a guy that you need to start at this point if he's out there. If you have him on your team, he's a guy that you can trust. He's a fairly safe pick. Uh, Jarek McKinnon for the Vikings. What about him? Well, with Murray's success lately, that lowers his value, obviously, because but because he's used a lot in the passing game, he holds value in PPR leagues, so I uh, probably wouldn't start Jared McKinnon in standard leagues, but if you're in a PPR league, he holds value as a running back three. Tevin Coleman. Uh, a lot of you last week, we said, you know what, whenever Freeman's out, you have to start Tevin Coleman. That's paid off well. I think in the last uh, couple weeks, he's had four touchdowns in three weeks. Last week, he had two more. 
Now, you have to watch the injury report and see what happens. If Freeman's out, he's a must-start. Tevin Coleman, you have to start him if Freeman's out. Now, if Freeman starts, uh, Tevin Coleman has flex value, and he bumps down to about a wide receiver, or running back three, I should say. Uh, Freeman in this game, if Freeman starts, you need to start him. He sits as a low-end running back two against a good Vikings defense. So if Freeman plays, you've got to play him. You've got a temporary expectation playing the Vikings defense. As far as wideouts go, <coughs> you got to start Julio Jones. Now, Julio Jones has a tough matchup playing Rhodes. Xavier Rhodes is a good cornerback, but he's Julio Jones, so he's still a wide receiver. One stud. You have to start him last week. He was huge. That's the reason why you roll with your big names. If you're really not sure where to go when it comes to matchups and you're vacillating between two guys, that's why you roll with the studs because you never know you're going to have a breakout game like he had last week. Uh, you look at Snu. Um, Snu against the Vikings defense. That is quality. Falls into what I call wide receiver four category. He's not worth a start. And then Adam Thielen. Well, let's look at the Vikings wide receivers. Adam Thielen plays Atlanta. Atlanta goes with seventh fewest points to wide receivers. It doesn't matter. Alan, um, Adam is playing so well right now. Right now, Adam Thielen is only behind Brown and Jones in terms of yards. He's a wide receiver one. He's a must play. It doesn't matter how good these defenses are he's facing. He's a guy that you got to roll out there. Let me look at Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs is a decent start as what I would say is a wide receiver three. Now, the one thing that bodes well for uh, those wide receivers is with Ryan playing better uh, in Minnesota, averaging over 30 points per game in the last four games. This could be a higher scoring game that kind of increases the value for those wideouts. As far as tight ends go, I would sit Hooper. Um... Minnesota is really tough against tight ends, and he's been inconsistent at best. This guy's Kyle Rudolph goes. He had two touchdowns last game, and a lot of people were upset because he scored two touchdowns. Should he start him? Should he not start him? But if you take a look at the two touchdowns, uh, he didn't have a great game. He's had lower targets this year. He's had lower yardage and lower um, catch totals. He's really what we would call touchdown dependent at this point. So Kyle has some value, but he's playing a lot of defense that's stingy against tight ends. So I would say that he falls in kind of that tight end 10 to 14 range if you're looking for somebody to start. As far as kickers go, start Brian. Uh, you can start Kyle Forbath, but he's struggling the last two weeks. He's missed three field goals in two weeks. So he's kind of getting on that brink of a guy that's getting questionable at this point. But I think you probably roll with him and feel safe. As far as uh, defenses go, I'd really sit both. The Vikings defense has played really good this year in terms of just football. But in terms of fantasy football, that hasn't equated to great numbers. Now they're playing a lot to who's not great uh, in terms of points allowed to opposing defenses. I would sit the Falcons defense. Case Keenum is uh, holds on the ball very well, doesn't turn over a lot, so I would sit both defenses. Patriots versus the Bills. Uh, Tom Brady. Well, Buffalo is tough against quarterbacks, but it doesn't matter. It's Tom Brady, so just start him and don't think twice about it. As far as Tyrod Taylor goes, should you start Tyrod Taylor? Well, let's take a look at uh, New England's defense first. Uh, this defense is what I call a tale of two defenses. If you look at the first six games of the year, New England's defense had allowed 335 passing yards per game. But in the last five, they're only allowing 220 passing yards per game. So that defense has trimmed over 100 yards off per game in terms of passing yardage allowed. In the first four games, the defense allowed 36.75 points. But in the last seven games, New England's defense is only allowing 13.14 points. So this defense has really figured out they've really turned a corner. They're very tough right now. They look at Tyrod Taylor last two weeks since he's come back. Um, he's averaged about 170 passing yards and one TD. That's hardly great numbers. I would say Tyrod Taylor is somebody that you probably want to sit this week. As far as running backs in this game goes, look at Sean McCoy. You need to start him as a running back one. So week in and week out, you're going to start him. He's going to have some weeks where teams will load the box and they may shut him down, but you can't sit McCoy. It doesn't matter. Um, unless you got, uh, I don't know who you'd have out there. I suppose if you had Leonard Fournette and, and the guy like Le'Veon Bell on your bench and McCoy was your third running back, you could sit him. But let's be honest, who's got a roster like that? You're going to always start LaShawn McCoy. Uh, as far as running backs for New England, uh, Deion Lewis is a guy that you can start. He continues to operate as a lead back. Right now, Mike Gillespie has been active three games in a row. He's a non-factor. The lead back in this offense right now is Deion Lewis. And this last week, he showed he had over 100 yards of rushing. So he's a guy that you can start. Uh, because of his size, not a big back. He's smaller. And the fact they like to spread the ball around, he's got a lower ceiling. So you start Deion Lewis, but don't expect a lot from him. His carries typically won't go above 15. Although he has had double-digit carries the last six weeks. What about Rex? Uh, Rex Burkett. Well, uh, he had two touchdowns last week. I think he's a guy that you can start in PPR leagues and in flex positions. But the one problem with him is that, one, Bill Belichick is unpredictable, as we know. You never know from week to week he's gonna, what he's going to do. They love to spread the ball around a lot. It's not just the different running backs, the wide receivers, tight ends. And so it's really hard to trust any run running back for uh, New England. I think that's where Rex sits at this point. He's a guy that you could play, I would say, in PPR leagues and in flex positions. 
But in standard leagues, I would lower him down to about a, a running back three based on your league size. As far as wideouts go in this game, you start Cooks. I would sit all other Miami, or I'm sorry, I would sit all other New England wide receivers. Uh, Danny Amadola at times has looked all right, but last week he had one catch. And like I said, the problem with New England is they sped the ball around a lot. These are tight ends, these are backs, so it makes it really hard to trust any other wideouts. Uh, one guy that you could trust would be Hogan, but he's not going to be back for this game. He's going to be out. He's going to miss another week. So right now, I would go with Cooks. I would sit all other New England wideouts. As far as Buffalo wideouts go, Zay Jones has got two touchdowns the last three weeks. Last game, he was targeted 10 times. I would say he falls into what I'd say a wide receiver four. And the Bills confirmed today that Calvin Benjamin is dealing with a torn meniscus, so he's a guy that you need to sit. I would sit all other Bills wideouts. As far as tight ends go, you got to start Gronkowski. That's another no-brainer. He's the best tight end in football, one of the best tight ends we've ever seen play the game. So whenever Gronk is healthy, you need to start him. Uh, I would say that Clay's worth a mid-range start. They need to throw the ball to somebody. Most likely, they're going to be playing from behind, so I think Clay could be a nice tight end start there for you. As far as kickers go, I would start Gaskowski. And given how New England defense has played, I would, st- I would sit Steven Hauschka. <clears throat> as far as defenses go, I would start New England's defense, and I would sit Buffalo. I would definitely say Buffalo versus Tom Brady. Let's look at the uh, Bears versus the 49ers. Well, I would sit both quarterbacks. One, Mitch Trubinsky. Now, he is playing a bad San Francisco pass defense. But it'd really be a stretch to start him for a few reasons. There's a big risk in starting Mitch Trubinsky, especially in Week 13 at this point. He's only had four touchdown passes in seven games that he's started. He's averaging only 162 passing yards per game. There's just a million reasons why I'd say starting Mitch Trubinsky, even though he's got a great matchup, is a bad idea. Go ahead and sit him. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo most likely is going to start this game. They haven't made the official announcement they're going to on Wednesday, but let's be honest, they would be stupid not to at this point. So they're going to start Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, but he's playing Chicago that's pretty good against the pass. In fact, they allow the 10th fewest points to quarterbacks. Uh, Jimmy doesn't have a lot of great weapons to go to, and so for that reason, the fact this is his first start ever, doesn't have a lot of great weapons, playing a decent Chicago defense, I think it'd be very risky to start Jimmy Garoppolo, so I would sit him also. There's just too many question marks there to trust him. As far as running backs go, Jordan Howard. Uh, Jordan Howard's been hit or miss this year, but Jordan Howard is actually a really, really good running back that's stuck on a very poor offense. But now this week, he's playing San Francisco, who gives up the most points to running backs. Now, if you take a look at uh, a few games this year, Jordan um, Jordan Howard has been bottled up, but he still had four games of over 100 rushing yards. And uh, in fact, this week, I would say this is going to be week number five. He's going to break 100 yards. He'll see 20, 25 carries. If you take a look at how his year has been, when he's played weaker rush defenses, he's really excelled, done well. When he's played really tough run defense, they have struggled. But this is a game that I think he's going to excel. He's going to see 20, 25 carries. He'll break 100 yards. You can trust Jordan Howard this week against San Francisco's run defense. He should have a great week. Uh, a lot of things people don't know about how good he's done the first two years he's been in the league. Jordan Howard uh, this week should pass Walter Pate and Matt Forte in terms of yards the first two years in the league. He's quietly had a phenomenal first two years in the league. He's a guy that's very solid. I would sit uh, Tariq Cohen. Um, he's been inconsistent, uh, mostly because of the play of his quarterback, Mitch Trubinsky. He's just not worth risking it. Maybe if you're in a deeper PPR league, you consider it, but I would probably sit him. As far as Carlos Hyde go, you need to start him. Uh, he's a lead back, and so he starts as a running back to uh, outsit Matt Breida. As far as wideouts go, you got Dontrell Inman. Now, he's the number one wideout for Chicago at this point, but he's had very modest numbers and a very bad offense. He's a wide receiver for most of you shouldn't even consider starting him unless you're really desperate out there. Uh, Goodwin, Marquise Goodwin for San Francisco. Now, he's had over 68 yards receiving three of the last four games. And with Jimmy Garoppolo, quarterback, that bumps up his value slightly. I would say he falls into wide receiver three to four category in deep leagues. Now, what he is, he's a speedster. He stretches the field, so he's going to have high yardage totals, but he's not going to have a lot of catches or targets. So what you do is he's a guy that you could start in standard leagues, but I definitely wouldn't start him in PPR leagues. You have much better options out there in PPR leagues to start than Goodwin. As far as tight ends go, Adam uh, Shaheen uh, had two decent weeks trending upward, and then last week he has one catch. So uh, what can you do with that? Well, I know that Chicago likes to use their tight ends. Zach Miller was having a decent year until he was out for the year. Uh, in fact, he's a rookie playing for a bad offense, and you have Mitch Trubinsky at quarterback. I wouldn't trust Adam. I would sit him, and I would sit Kittle until we see more. Um, until we have a chance to see how much chemistry George Kittle and Jimmy have at this point, I would sit him. As far as kickers go, I would uh, I would start Gould if you need to, and I would sit Santos. As far as defense, I would sit San Francisco, and you could start Chicago um, as a one-week, a very low plug-and-play defense. Let's look at the Packers versus the Buccaneers this week. Let's look at the quarterbacks there. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick or Jamison Winston, who's it going to be? Well, 
Uh, Ryan's played okay in relief of him. Not great, but sounds like Winston's going to be back this week. At least that's what the coach came out today and said. They feel very confident he'll be able to play, and that would give a huge boost to that offense. Now, if you take away um, two games where Jameis, Jameis and Winston left the game injured, if you take away those two games where he only played part of the game, you look at the other six, uh, he had a pretty good uh, year going. He had 10 touchdown passes, only five interceptions. Four of those six games, they had 300 yards passing. Now, he's a little risky due to injuries, but he has a good matchup against a weaker Green Bay pass defense. So if he is back this week, you have to watch the injury reports, check on Friday, find out if he's practiced, if he's going to play. But if he does play, he would actually be a good start this week for you. As far as Brent Hudley goes, uh, last week we said uh, he surprised everybody. He went out and Pittsburgh did well. Now this week he plays uh, Tampa Bay, who loves the 10th most points to quarterbacks. Uh, he surprised everybody last week going for 245 yards and three TDs and no picks. Has he turned a corner? Has he finally figured it out? Um, well, if you watch the game, if you broke it down a little bit closer, what you found is some of those big plays were a missed coverage, uh, long broken plays where there was some bad tackling. Um, I would say it's more of a defensive breakdown than it was great quarterback play. I don't want to take anything away from him. Obviously, he did well. But if you look at the other five games before that, he had a touchdown interception ratio of two touchdown passes to four picks. So it's not good. He's not a guy that you can trust. Um, if you need to grab him, he sits outside the top 20 in terms of the rankings. He does have a decent matchup, but I would caution you to have too much optimism and wanting to start him. I would probably look elsewhere. As far as running backs in this game go, let's look at Doug Martin. Uh, playing Green Bay, he's at the six most points to running backs, so he's got a good matchup. Uh, one, he's questionable. with concuss He's in concussion protocol. He is questionable. I would say if Doug Martin plays in this game, I would still sit him. He has been brutal lately. The last five weeks, had single digit, he's had single-digit points scored. Uh, his yards per carry have dropped terribly low. He's just not somebody who looks good at this point. So if Doug Martin ends up playing, I would sit him. Who I like in this game in terms of running backs for Tampa Bay is like Jock has Rogers. We actually said that last week. We said, start keep an eye on this guy. He's most likely going to go back into the running back position and get looks. And I think that he'd be a great fill in this week. So if Doug Martin sits, I would actually be comfortable picking up and playing Jock has Rogers. Uh, he's filled in nicely last year and at times this year. So he could be a nice um, sneaky play for you if you need one. As far as Jamal Williams in this game, um, He's a guy that you need to consider starting because he is a starter. And when it comes to fantasy, oftentimes volume trumps talent. And so he's going to get carries. He's going to get targets in the passing game. So he's a guy that you need to consider starting. But I would say this. Uh, right now, his yards per carry haven't been good. Um, in fact, his yards per carry last game, even though he had a big game in terms of uh, points scored, he still only averaged 3.1 yards per carry. And the last three weeks as a starter, his yards per carry have dropped from 3.4 to 3.2 to 3.1. Uh, he has running back two value because they're playing Tampa Bay, who's at the 10th most points to running backs. It's not a great start, but it could be a good start for one week. Um, but don't expect Jamal Williams long term to win this job. As far as wideouts go, Mike Evans. Uh, with Winston Dubek, that's a huge boost for Mike Evans. Jamison loves to feed him the ball, he loves to give him targets, and so that's huge. Mike Evans got to start him as a wide receiver one this week. As far as Jordan Nelson in this game goes, uh, since Huntley's taken over, he's been a non-factor. Jordan Nelson has disappeared. In fact, his best game since he's taken over has been four catches for 35 yards. I would sit him. Um, I guess if you need to start him, I suppose you would say this. He still is Jordy Nelson. The Tampa Bay's defense is not good. So if you're in a very deep league, you consider starting Jordy Nelson as a wide receiver three, but that's probably a stretch right now. Now the wide receiver that you want to start for Green Bay is Devontae Adams. Um, Devontae Adams, once again, he's playing Tampa Bay, who gives up the most points to wide receivers, so he's got a good matchup right there. Tampa Bay's weak against wideouts. And Adams has played really good with Brent at quarterback. Last four games, he's averaged 88 yards, nine targets for 6.25 catches, and during that span, he's had two touchdowns. So uh, Devontae Adams has actually played really well, even with Hunley at quarterback, so you can go ahead and start him. As far as Cobb in this game, uh, he streams as a wide receiver four in this matchup, and Deshaun Jackson would be a wide receiver of three to start. He would be a sufficient start also. As far as tight ends go, Tampa Bay is tough against tight ends, so I would sit the Green Bay's tight ends. Now, Brait, um, before Jamison Winston got injured, he was Mr. Consistency. He was come out, he was very consistent. Uh, but with Winston out, his numbers have plummeted. Now, he is coming back uh, this week. And so what value is that for Brait? Well, it depends. The one thing that's happened in the meantime while Brait has struggled and Winston has been out is that Howard has been more productive. The, the rookie tight end has looked pretty good. So uh, the problem with that is that becomes kind of like that tight end by committee, as you would say, if there's such a thing, tight end by committee. Um, that lowers the value for both one. They're, they're, I would say, mid-plays. They sit about 13 to 15 in terms of the tight end rankings this week. 
As far as kickers go, I would sit Crosby. He hasn't been good all year. He's only had double-digit points scored once. I would sit Crosby. And Patrick Murray's not a bad start, actually. Since he's come over to Tampa Bay, he's played fairly well. And I would sit both defenses in this game. Texas versus the Titans. Well, uh, Tom Savage. Well, with Hopkins at wide receiver, I think he makes Savage look decent. Hopkins is a phenomenal wideout at this point. Uh, since he's been playing, Savage's starters average one touchdown per game. That's not something to write home about. It's not great. Uh, he would be a low-end start at best, but I would probably sit Tom Savage. If you're considering starting him, you're probably in a real dire situation. Um, and he's playing a defense that's actually been surprisingly good. The Titans' defense isn't bad, actually. And so, and right now, the Titans are in the mix for a division title. They're, they're playing at home. There's a lot of reasons why I think Savage is a bad play this week. As far as Marcus Mariota goes... Um, Houston gives up the most points to quarterbacks, so this seemed to be a good matchup for Marcus Mariota. But uh, Mariota has struggled all year long. Last week, he had a really good quarterback-friendly matchup against Indianapolis, and he struggled to 7.76 points. He had 186 yards passing and only one touchdown pass against two picks. So even in a really quarterback-friendly matchup, Marcus really struggled once again. 7.76 points. Uh, it wasn't great at all. On the year, he's got seven, or he's got nine touchdown passes to 12 picks. It's just been a, a struggle all year long for him. Now, the one positive thing he does, he does get uh, Matthews back this week, and that would be a huge boost for him. Uh, should you start him all? Matchup aside, I think it'd be risky to start him at this point, especially week 13. Like I've said, for a lot of you, your margin for error is pretty small this week. You need to win. Uh, I would probably hope that you could find some better option out there than Marriott at this point. As far as running backs go, uh, Houston gives up the second fewest points to running backs. What makes matters worse for the running backs for the Titans? And Murray is getting worse. Uh, age and injuries are starting to catch up to him. The last six games, his yards per carry have been 2.45. Now, the one thing that helps him is he gets the goal line carries, and he's averaging four, to, or four receptions per game over the last six games. So what do you do? Would you start DeMarco Murray in this game? Um Maybe I'd consider him if you're in a PPR league or if you're very desperate. He's a very low-end play. There's just so many re reasons why you may want to stay away from him. Each game he's getting worse and worse. He's struggling. Now, let's look at uh, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's actually ran really well this year. Um, he's been a lot more productive than Murray. In fact, on the year, he's got a 4.6 yards per carry. But for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, the team really refuses to – they just refuse to commit to him in the run game. Um, to me, he should be your lead back with DeMarco Murray coming off your bench on third downs. Uh, in a couple key situations, but they just refuse to give Henry those sort of carries. He doesn't get the goal line carries. He's not getting the bulk of the carries, and the Texans are tough against the run, so I'd say that Derrick Henry is a guy that you're going to want to sit this week. Uh, as far as wideouts go in this game, what should you do here? Well, <clears throat> let's take a look at uh, wideouts in this game. Uh, Texans give the six most points to wideouts, so Matthews, if he plays, uh, right now he's day-to-day -day with a hamstring injury, he becomes number one wideout if he plays. He's Mark's his favorite target. So I would say he's not a great play, but he's an adequate play if you need to go that route. Um, the other one here, Davis. I've got a huge talent, rookie Davis, Corey Davis out there. Um, but he's just not there yet as a rookie. In the last couple games, uh, since he's come back from injuries, his, high, his yards totals have been 48. That's kind of his high water mark at this point. He's just not somebody you can trust. So I would stay away from him. Uh, as far as wide receivers for the Texans, sit all ones except for DeAndre Hopkins. you got to start him week in, week out. doesn't matter who's played. This guy is a phenom. He's a phenomenal athlete. He's a stud. You need to play him. It doesn't matter who he faces. So. As far as tight ends go, C.J. Federautz, um, since he came back from the IR, he's playing fine but not great. Now, last game he did have eight targets for four catches. So uh, he kind of sits around, I would say, a tight end 12 to 15 range at this point. Not a great play but an adequate play out there. Uh, start Delaney Walker. Right now, he's the best weapon in that passing game. And the Texans give up a lot of points to tight end. So Delaney Walker is a good start for you out there. As far as kickers go, start Ryan Suck up. And I would sit the Texas kicker. As far as defenses go, I would sit the Texans. And I would start the Titans. Um, right now, the Texans allow the eighth most points to defenses. Last week, the Titans had eight sacks. So they're they're probably a, a low-end defensive play, but you could sneak them in there and play them this week if you need to. The Dolphins versus the Broncos. Let's take a look at the quarterbacks in this game. Uh, Jay Culler, he's questionable. Sounds like he'll probably be back this week. Uh, he's really struggled all year, minus one game versus Oakland. Take away that one game versus Oakland, which he had a great game. Beyond that, he struggled all year long. And now he faces a solid Denver defense. I would stay away from that. I would not be comfortable starting Jay Culler in this one. As far as Denver quarterbacks go, it'll be Trevor Simeon. Paxton Lynch is going to be out for a while. 
Um, of the two quarterbacks, Cutler, Simeon, I actually prefer Simeon in this game. He's playing Miami, who allows the six most points to quarterbacks. No, I would hardly say that I like Trevor Simeon, even though he's got a good matchup. I wouldn't say it's a great play for you. Uh, last week, in relief, he had two touchdown passes. But if you look at the previous five before that, he started to only had three touchdown passes. The reason why the team switched to Paxton Lynch, there's just so many reasons why uh, Trevor's probably a guy that you want to stay away from. So neither one of these quarterbacks are somebody that I'd prefer to start. Stay away from those guys if you can help it. Running backs in this game, well, let's look at Drake. Now, Williams is going to be out for a while. He has a pectoral injury. It sounds like he's going to be out for a couple weeks. And so that gives uh, Drake a huge bump in value. And Drake, because of it now, becomes the number one guy, the go-to guy. They really don't have anybody else there. He becomes a running back to at this point now he does have a tough matchup against denver but he's using the passing game and so i actually feel comfortable starting drake as a running back to this week simply because williams is out so he had a majority of the carries and targets for the running backs there i would sit booker anderson charles that is true running back by committee none of them are trustworthy it's been a mess stay away from all denver running backs at this point as far as wideouts go uh, miami gives up 10th fewest points to wideouts so miami's tough to wideouts look at uh Demarius thomas now, with Trevor Simeon in there, which is actually a bump for Thomas's value, the three previous weeks with Simeon at quarterback, he had three touchdown passes, or three touchdown passes in three weeks in a row, I should say. Um, so I would say that Trevor Simeon, not Trevor Simeon, but uh, Demarius Thomas becomes a wide receiver three play this week. Emmanuel Sanders. Um, Emmanuel Sanders only really had two good games all year long. He's not trustworthy. He's a wide receiver four this week. Really, uh, him and Demarius Thomas are just victims of bad quarterback play. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is, so you got to really bump his value down. As far as tight ends go, I would sit Denver's tight ends, but I would start Julius Thomas. Denver gives up a lot of points at tight end, so I think he's a guy that can rely on heavy, heavily in this game. And I would sit both kickers, and I would sit both defenses right now. None of those defenses are playing all that great. The Jets versus the Chiefs. So we had quarterbacks Alex Smith. Now, earlier this year, we called him a game manager. He had a hot year. We started. We said, well, don't get too excited. This guy's a game manager. He'll come back down to the earth. I would give him credit. Uh, he continued playing well for much longer than I expected. But he's actually come back down to the earth. Um, now, once again, I'll give him credit. He's a guy that started very well. Statistically, he's having a career year. But the last four games, he's come back down to being a game manager at this point. And the whole Chiefs team has really fallen on hard times. Now, they do have a good matchup this week. Smith plays the Jets, who gives up the ninth most points to quarterbacks. And this is a game that they need to win because they're still in first place in their division, if you can believe that at this point. Uh, he's a usable quarterback. I say he sits the range. Smith is about a 12-16 to 16 quarterback based on your scoring system and rules. That's where he kind of lands there. Uh, Josh McCown. Josh has got a good start versus Kansas City to get up to 16 with points to quarterbacks. And Josh is having a very nice year right now. Got 17 touchdown passes to only eight interceptions. He's coming off a great game against a very tough Carolina defense. He had 300 passing yards and three TDs. So I like Josh McCown. I think he's a good safe start for you out there. As far as running backs go, I would start Hunt. Now, I know that uh, his numbers are declining. He had that hot first six games. The guy was on fire. Um, so we've seen a decline in his carries and his points, but he's still the lead back there. He still is a running back, too, and he needs to be start th started this week. Let's take a look at Kansas City's defense. They give up the six fewest points to running backs. So uh, Kansas City's stingy against the run. And so let's take a look at the running backs for the Jets. You had uh, Forte. It sounded like he was going to miss the game because he had a swollen knee, but he actually ended up playing in the game. So you had him and Powell with Forte back. That puts him back in the dreaded running back by committee, and it devalues both running backs. Um, now, before hurting his knee, Matt Forte was really training upward. He was kind of leading the race in terms of uh, getting the goal line carries and the targets. So if there was a running back that <coughs> – excuse me, I'm struggling with the cold here, still trying to get over this thing. Um, so if you had to roll with a running back, I would say Matt Forte as a running back four. It's kind of where he lands, but I don't like either one of those guys right now against a tough matchup. As far as wideouts go, you got Robbie Anderson. Uh, Kansas City gives the third most points to wideout, so this is a beautiful matchup for him. And Robbie Anderson's got six touchdowns in the last five games. Last week he had six catches, 146 yards, so he's a wide receiver two, borderline on a wide receiver run as he continues to trend upwards. This guy is really good, big target at six foot three. I really like this kid. <coughs> You look at uh, Curse in this game, he's worth a flyer in a deep, deep league if you want to start him. Uh, Tyree Kill in this game, he's the only Kansas City wide receiver that's really worth even having a conversation about. Plays the Jets, who give the ninth most points to wide receivers. Now he's been quiet this year, but he's still the number one wideout, so he falls into that wide receiver two category as far as the guy that you may want to start. As far as tight ends go, 
Uh, Travis Kelsey, you need to start him. He's the best head out there besides Gronkowski. Then Austin Safarian Jenkins. Well, Kansas City's tough on tight ends, so right now Austin drops out of the top 12 consideration this week. For some of you, you may need to start a guy like him, and that's fine, but don't expect a lot. Lower your expectations. <clears throat> I would start both kickers in this game, and I would sit Kansas City's defense. Uh, they just can't put pressure on the quarterback right now. They're messing out. Also, sit the Jets' defense in this one. The Jaguars versus the Colts. Look at quarterback. Look at let's look at Jacoby Brissett. Um, he's playing the Jaguars, so just sit him. Okay, it doesn't matter. Just sit him. Yeah, every once in a while, a team will go out there and they'll surprise the Jags and they'll do well. I know last week that Gabbard had a uh, surprise. But you're playing Russian roulette if you start a quarterback against this Jaguars defense. This, this Jaguars defense is very, very good. So you need to sit Jacoby. Don't even think about it. Uh, I would sit Blake Bortles. Last week he ran for two tees, kind of salvaged his fantasy day. But last week he reminded everybody why he's not a good quarterback. The Jaguars would be in a top conversation in terms of one of the best teams in the AFC if they had any quarterback play at all. Now, it doesn't matter to me that if he's playing Indianapolis, um, he has a decent matchup there, but he's still in the bottom third of rankings. Blank Burles is not good. If you minus one big game that he had earlier this year, um, in the other nine games, he's only got seven touchdown passes, so Blake Burles is a guy that you need to sit. Now, as far as running backs go, uh, last time the Jaguars played the Colts, they shut them out, so I wouldn't even bother looking at Gore at this point. Uh, for some of you that are very desperate, I guess uh, you have to start him, but, you know... Um, 15, 20 carries for 50 or 60 yards, maybe uh, a touchdown. If you're lucky, I would sit him. Leonard Fournette is a guy that you got to start at this point. Now, um, early in there, he looked like an unstoppable rookie. Two of the last three weeks, defenses have slowed him down. But right now, he's playing Indianapolis. Gives up the eighth most points to running back. So he's a must-start running back one for you. <clears throat> now, somebody's going to ask me about Yeldon. Now, Yeldon gets used in the passing game. That's where his value is at. So if the Jags fall behind and they've got to throw the ball a lot, Value, uh, Yeldon gets used a lot. His value goes up. I don't expect that the Jags will be playing from behind a lot in this game, and so I'd say Yeldon doesn't have a lot of value there. As far as wideouts go, um, I would sit T.Y. Hill, and that's too bad. I love T.Y. Hill, and he desperately misses Andrew Luck at this point. Um, if you've got to play him, I would say Hilton falls into what I'd say a wide receiver three or four this week. Just so you know where I sit in terms of T.Y. Hill, and I have him in a 12-team uh, PPR league. It's in a dynasty league that I have him in. And I'm going to be sitting him this week. I'm not going to start T.Y. Hilton there. Let's look at Indianapolis. They give the eighth most points to wide receivers. D.D. Westbrook is a guy that's been trending up. He had six targets two weeks ago. Last week he had ten targets. Then you get Marcus Lee, who had a solid four-game stretch. But neither one of those guys are great values. I would say both Lee and Westbrook, because of Bortles and because of the offense that they have, fall into what I call wide receiver four value. Uh, <clears throat> I would start Jack Doyle. He's the most reliable target uh, for Jacoby Brissett. He keeps going to him. He likes his tight ends. And I would imagine a game like this where they're going to put a lot of pressure. Oftentimes, they're going to throw the short routes, the check down guys. Often, the tight ends get more play in games like that. I would sit Lewis. I would start I would start Josh Lambeau. I would sit Adam Vinatieri. And I would sit Andy's defense, but I would start the Jaguars defense. How about the Lions versus the Ravens? Let's get quarterbacks Joe Flacco. Um... I would sit him. He's been bad all year. Six games this year, he's had single-digit points scored for quarterbacks. That's not very good. He's averaged 170 passing yards per game, and he has a TD to interception ratio of 9 to 11. This offense is bad right now. Sit Flacco. As far as Matthew Stafford goes, he's got a tough matchup. The Ravens allow the fewest points to quarterbacks, so that drops his value. But starting Stafford is still a better option than what many are going to look at out there in terms of free agents, waiver wires. So it's a little bit riskier, but I still think he's a low-end quarterback play for you. Stafford's having a very good year. He's got 21 touchdown passes, only six interceptions. He's got a very good quarterback rating of 97.3. So he's not a great play, but he's a fair play this week, even against a good matchup. He played the Vikings defense last week, who's pretty solid, and he had a good day. I think you'll have similar numbers like he had against the Vikings against the Ravens this week. As far as running backs in this game go, there's Amir, Ab Amir Abdullah. Uh, the Ravens are really tough against the run, and Amir has been bad all year. He's averaging, only averaging 3.4 yards per carry. He's a guy that I would sit, or if you need to start him, he's a Rogers, or I would say he's a running back 3-4 to four in deep leagues. Uh, theoretic in this game, he only has value in PPR leagues, and even then he's very low end. Even his PPR value is very low. At this point, I'd probably stay away from Riddick. <clears throat> Then Al Collins in this game. Now, he's a guy that we've talked about for quite a while. He's got a great matchup this week against Detroit. Detroit gives up the third most points to running backs. Collins has had touchdowns two weeks in a row. He's had healthy yards per carry the year of 4.9. 
He's been seeing an increase in his carry and his roles in the offense. If you go all the way back to week two, they continue to get him more and more involved. He's a guy that you can trust. He's a great running back, too, this week for you. I would sit Allen. Uh, the problem with the Allen in this now is with Woodhead back. Uh, Woodhead really takes away his value because Woodhead's used a lot in the passing game, and that's where Allen had value was targets in the passing game. And so I would sit Allen. I'd only start Woodhead in PPR leagues. He's not getting the goal line carries. He's really not getting carries in general. And so it's even a stretch to play Woodard in PPR leagues at this point. So I'd probably sit him. If you're really desperate, you could play him in deeper leagues. As far as wideouts go, I would sit all Ravens wideouts at this point. Macklin and Wallace, neither one of those guys are really worth much. I would say they're wide receiver fives. Uh, Marvin Jones. <clears throat> now, the Ravens are tough against the pass, but Marvin Jones, the last six weeks, has been putting up wide receiver one type numbers. The last six weeks, he's been in the top ten in wide receiver scoring. So he's a guy that you need to start even in a tough matchup until he cools down. you got to go with Marvin Jones. He's hot right now. And then uh, Golden Tate. Uh, last two weeks, Golden Tate's taking a little bit of a hit. Um, and against the Ravens, who are tough against the pass, I would say he falls down to a wide receiver three category. Um, he can be considered a wide receiver two in PPR leagues because he's a guy that I expect will go out and have six, seven catches, 75 yards. Don't expect him to get a TD or 100 yards, but he does get a lot of targets in the passing game typically. He was on pace for 100 catches this year, so uh, that's where I would put him in that talk. I would sit both tight ends in this game. I would start both kickers. I would sit Detroit's defense, but I would start the Ravens. They've been very good this year, but Stafford lowers their value in this game. The Browns versus the Chargers. Let's take a look at uh, Kaiser. Um, Sid him. Deshaun Kaiser has struggled all year. He faces the Chargers. Joey Bosa and that front line are very, very good. They allow the fourth fewest points to quarterbacks at this point, and Kaiser is not very good. You need to sit him. As far as Phil Rivers goes, he's having a solid year again. Uh, the guy just keeps hanging there, putting up decent numbers. Got 20 touchdown passes, only four interceptions. Uh, he's actually played better the last three weeks, in fact. He's looked really good. Now he faces the Browns, who allow the 13th most points to quarterback, so you can start Phillip Rivers in this game. <clears throat> as far as the running backs go in this game, uh, let's look at Isaiah Crowell. Uh, I would start him. He plays the Chargers, get the fourth most points to running backs. Uh, if you take away the bad game versus the Jaguars, Isaiah Crowell didn't have a very good game versus the Jaguars, but I think you can kind of throw that out. That's one of those anomalies. He played a very good defense. Besides that, the other three games, he's looked very good. The other three games, he's totaled 249 total yards. He had 5.79 yards per carry during that stretch, and they've been working him into the passing game. So Isaiah Crowell is a good start this week. I would start Gordon. Now, uh, Gordon actually has a tough matchup. The Browns give up the eighth fewest points to running backs. So he falls to a running back two category this week, but you still need to play him because he's going to get a bulk of the carries there. Austin Eckler is a nice rookie there. He's got some PPR value, but until he's more trustworthy, I won't trust him at this point in week 13. As far as wideouts go, I'd start Keenan Allen. We told a lot of you guys to be patient, to keep playing this guy. I know he went through a stretch there. Even the best wide receivers go through those quiet parts. We hope that you listen to us. The last two weeks, this guy has been on fire. He had 12 catches, 159 yards, two TDs. He follows it up with 11 catches, 172 yards, and a TD. Um, he's a guy that you need to start. doesn't matter. I would sit all other wide receivers for the Chargers at this point. Um, they just spread the ball around too much. Those targets get divvied up too much. Uh, I would start Corey Coleman in this game. Now, he said uh, he's faced two very good pass defenses. Corey Coleman faced the Ravens and the Jags. And even during that, he still had six catches for 80 yards and three catches for 64 yards on 19 targets. So uh, he's a guy that you could start. And Josh Gordon is going to get his first start. Coach has already set out that he's going to play. And as much as Josh can handle it, we'll see what kind of shape he's in. He's going to see the field a lot. Uh, with that said, I wouldn't start Josh Gordon. I know it's tempting. I know it's exciting. I know you want to. I've got him in a couple leagues. But you need to sit. You need to wait and see how he performs this week so we can get a real gauge of where he is at. As far as tight ends go, I would sit David Njoku. Uh, charge are tough against tight ends. And I would start Hunter Henley. He had a nice rebound week last week. He had five catches, 76 yards, and a TD. Now he plays the Browns this week. He'll give up the most points to tight ends. So start Hunter Henry. Uh, Novak is questionable the kicker, so I would probably sit him, and I would sit Zane Gonzalez. I would sit the Browns defense, but start the Chargers. The Chargers have a great matchup this week. That defense is getting better and better. Start the Chargers defense. <clears throat> Giants versus the Raiders. Well, uh, Eli Manning got benched today, and now they're going to start Geno Smith. So uh, Geno Smith plays Oakland. Gives up the eighth most points to quarterbacks. Well, 
Um, there's a lot of reasons why I want to start Geno Smith. One, Sterling Shepard, his best wide receiver stat is still questionable. It's a bad offense. Smith, his career hasn't been great to begin with. So, uh, in fact, the last time he had significant players in 2014, this hardly garners a lot of trust on my part. So I would not trust him. I would sit him unless you're extremely, extremely desperate at this point. Uh, Derek Carr. Now, Derek Carr in this game, this one's tough. He's got a great matchup facing the Giants. Who got the third most points to quarterbacks, but he's going to be without Crabtree, who's suspended, and Cooper, who has ankle injury, and he's in concussion protocol. It doesn't look like Amari Cooper is going to be available in this game, so his two best wideouts are going to be out. At least with Cordell Patterson, Johnny Holton, and Seth Roberts as his wideouts. Um, this is too good of a matchup not to start Carr in, so you're going to need to start him, a lot of you, but you need to lower your expectations. Um, if he had his weapons there, he would have been a top 10 start this week. He probably falls closer to 12 to 15 range because of that. So as running backs go, uh, the Raiders allow the fifth fewest points to running backs. So um, I'm sorry, they allow the fifth most points to running backs. So Orleans Dark was a great start this week. I'm sure they're going to try to give them the ball a lot, keep pressure off Geno Smith. So Orleans Dark was a great start. The problem with Darkwood this year, um, offense is terrible and there's bad quarterback play. The positive thing about him, he's a lead back. He's made a bulk of the carries and he's actually performed pretty admirably. His yards per carry set up 4.6. So um, he's a guy that you got to play. <laughs> As far as Marshawn Lynch go in this game, um, you need to start Marshawn Lynch, but he's really become what I would say a uh, tight end dependent running back at this point. Now, they have used him more in the passing in the last three weeks, and he is running very hard. He's very physical, but yet his yards per carry needs to stand at 3.7, so he's not a great option out there, but some of you have to start him as a, ride, a running back, too, at this point. Washington and Richard, I would really sit both those other running backs for Oakland. The reason why is they're very similar. In fact, they're almost the exact same size, exact same role. They both can be used in passing game. Because of it, though, that share role devalues both of them. As far as wideouts go, Sterling Shepard, um, if he starts, we'll see. I know he's been short with migraines and missed the last two games. So he's been a non-factor, but before he had the migraine issue, he had two big games. He had five catches for 70 yards, and he followed up with 11 catches, 142 yards. He's the only real wide receiver weapon they have there, so if he plays, you need to start him. He's not just a good option because of volume. He's a good option because he's a very talented second-year wide receiver, so if he plays, uh, you need to play him. Uh, of course, like we said, Cooper and Crabtree are going to be out. You could consider starting Cordell Patterson, maybe. That's kind of a stretch. I would say he's a wide receiver forward this week. Last weekend, about three catches, 72 yards, and he is using the passing game, but he's not very dependable at this point. Um, in fact, I'd probably say he falls closer to a wide receiver five. As far as tight ends go, I would start Cook. He's the only really trustworthy weapon that Carr is going to have, and start Evan Ingram in this game. Uh, I would sit both kickers. If you have to start one, start Tavecchio. I would sit Oakland. Uh, in fact, I would sit both defenses in this game. Saints versus the Panthers. Let's look at Cam Newton. Well, uh, they play New Orleans, who give the 14th fewest points to quarterbacks. Now, uh, Cam Newton hasn't been great in the passing game this year, but it's his legs that keep him in it. In fact, on this year, he's got about 500 yards rushing and five TDs, and so that keeps him relevant in terms of fantasy football. So he's a guy that you can start. He's a mid-range quarterback. Uh, Drew Brees is a run-heavy offense, so this is not the Drew Brees of a couple years ago. He's not averaging over 300 passing yards per game, but he's still Drew Brees. He's still a quality quarterback, and so he's not great, but he's a quality play for you out there. As far as running backs go in this game, you need to start both Saints running backs. Uh, you look at uh, Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara are both setting records in terms of what they're doing. It's phenomenal. In fact, I'm just going to come out here and say it right now. I think the best fantasy player this year Okay, not just rookie, but the best fantasy player by far when you take a look at what he's doing, how he's came on, especially if you look at the first two weeks, he didn't have a prominent role. Alvin Kamara has been lights out. This guy is phenomenal, and so he's been great. Got to start both of those guys. And that's just a reminder to me, and I look at Alvin Kamara, why you need to stay active in the waiver wire. This is a guy that in most leagues was not drafted. In fact, for a lot of leagues, it took weeks one or two before he was picked up. Stay active. Never leave dead weight on your bench. He's a prime example. A lot of people are going to win championships because of that pickup right there. Um, start uh, Christian McCaffrey. He's good in PPR leagues. In standard leagues, he sits at about a running back three. I would sit Stewart at this point. As far as wide receivers go, you got to start Thomas. And start uh, Devin Functious. He has been very, very good as a wide receiver one. He's excelled in that role. In fact, he's done much better than Calvin Benjamin. Maybe there's something that we didn't see. There's a reason why Panthers trade him away. They felt that Functious could do it. And he's done a great job in that role. Start Functious. Uh, Ted Ginn Jr. is a guy that you could start the last two weeks. He's had six catches, 87 yards, seven catches, 71 yards. He's a wide receiver three play this week. As far as tight ends go, I would sit Fleener, and you need to walk Greg Olson. A lot of you got burnt last week. You started Greg Olson. He left the game with a foot injury. Now, reports are it was soreness in that uh, foot that he'd injured, but they said he's fine. 
now for me, that's concerning. Uh, he only had one catch last game. He had a lead with a sore foot. They said he's going to be okay. I would hate to rely on him if I was you, so I would try to probably find somebody else that you can trust. How you know if that foot's 100% recovered. Start both kickers in this game, Lutz and Gano. Sit both defenses. The Rams versus the Cardinals. Jared Goff. Well, here's what Jared Goff has done this year. Against very tough pass defenses, he struggled, and he's excelled against lower-end pass defenses. Now, this week he plays Arizona, gives up the fifth most points to quarterback. So even with Woods out, this is a good start with Jared Goff. You can start him this week. we got Blaine Gabbert. Um, plays the Rams, who gives up the six fewest points to quarterbacks. Now, last week he played very well versus the Jets' defense. Um, Blaine still has a tough matchup. He's worth a start in deep leagues or leagues where you have to start two quarterbacks. I would say Blaine runs in the quarterback 20 to 26 range, depending upon your league scoring and settings. He surprised a lot of people the last two weeks. I still am not confident in Blaine. I hope that you can look elsewhere. As far as the running backs go, the Rams give up the second most points to running backs. So uh, here's what we said about Adrian Peterson the last few weeks. He runs in proportion to the defense that he plays. I Meaning when he faces really good run defenses, he doesn't do well. When he faces weak run defenses, he excels. It's just the way it's been for him. His numbers have been very clear. We've almost predicted each week how he's going to done. If you stuck to our advice, you did well. Um, this week, he plays a defense that gives up a lot of yards, so we expect him to play well this week. He's got a very good matchup. Start Adrian Peterson in this game. Start Todd Gurley. Um, there's only once this year Todd Gurley's been single-digit points scored in fantasy, so you got to start Todd Gurley. As far as wide outs go, Larry Fitzgerald. Now he had an off week against a really good Jags defense. Now the Rams are also tough against the pass. But the Rams are not like the Jags. They're not even in the same category in terms of defenses are. So we expect Larry to rebound. He's a wide receiver to start this week. And the Rams give the 11th most points to wide receivers. So, um, not the Rams, I'm sorry. The Cardinals. The Cardinals give the 11th most points to wide receivers. So look at Cooper Cup. Uh, he had a nice week last week. He had eight catches, 116 yards. His Wood was out. Um, Goff's favorite target, Woods, is out. will be out for a while. And we kind of stated that of all the wide receivers that benefit the most, we felt that Cooper Cup would, and he did. Uh, he'll continue to see a wide receiver, too, while Woods is gone. Uh, Watson did all right. He had a good week. He says he's a wide receiver, three, this week. As far as tight ends go, Ricky Seals-Jones surprised everybody. The rookie came out last week, did really well, and he followed it up with even better performance last week. He looks good. He looks great there. Um, he does have a very tough matchup against the Rams defense. That's tough against tight ends. So he's a guy that you could start, but... Because he's a rookie, he has a tough matchup. I think it's a little risky at this point to trust in him. I would sit Tyler Higby. Uh, start Greg Zerline. I would sit Dawson. I would start the Rams defense, but I would sit the Cardinals defense. Let's look at the Eagles versus the Seahawks. Let's look at the quarterbacks in this game. Uh, you need to start both quarterbacks. Carson Wentz is playing great right now, in my humble opinion, for what it's worth. He's playing better than any quarterback in the league right now. One thing that's been hurting his numbers is his yardage totals have been lower the last four games. But the reason why his yardage totals have been lower, they've been blowing out teams. Last four games, by the second half, he didn't need to throw the ball practically. And so uh, the one thing that's going to help him in this game, though, is it's not going to be a blowout. I'm sure that Wilson put enough points on the board will have to continue to throw the ball. So I think Wentz is a great start. Without Sherman and Cam Chancellor in this game, that Seattle defense is vulnerable to quarterbacks. So you need to start Wentz. Uh, you start Russell Wilson. They have no running game. This offense runs through his arm and through his legs. Wilson's have over 20 points scored the last six games, so Russell Wilson is a great start. Now, as far as running backs in this league, go, let's look at the running backs for the Eagles. you got Blunt, Jay, Ajayi, and Smallwood. Um, this is still a running back by committee. I know a lot of people were surprised. I was surprised that LeGarrette Blunt went out and had the many carries he did and that uh, Jay Ajayi didn't have as many carries. Um, the problem with it is, I think this is a true running back by committee now. I think that the long term, I love Jay Ajay. I think he's going to be a spectacular running back there. I think he's going to have a great career there. But right now, it's hard to trust any of those running backs going forward. So I would probably sit them all. Um, if you got to start one, I still think that they're worth a running back three consideration for Jay Ajay or Blunt. Um, but once again, that's just scary risky at this point. See all Seattle backs. Now the Seattle backs are worth a start at this point. As far as wide outs go, I would start Baldwin, but I would sit Lockett and Richardson. They're just not consistent enough in their targets and their catches to be trusted. And I would start Elshon Jeffrey. We've got five TDs last four games. He's become Wentz's favorite target in the red zone. I would sit Nelson. Now, Nelson Agar last game did have a touchdown, but he's barely had above two catches per game last four games. He's really seen a decrease in targets and looks, so I would sit Nelson Aguilar. I would start Elshon Jeffrey. 
I would start uh, Jimmy Graham. He's eight touchdowns on the year, and I would start Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz right now is the third best tight end in the league behind Gronk and Kelsey. I would start Elliott and Walsh. Now, Walsh is an okay start, but he's missed some field goals lately. So as a Vikings fan, I can feel your pain, Seattle people. I know what it's like to miss that field goal, but uh, you could start him. I would sit both defenses. Let's look at the Steelers versus the Bengals in this one here. Steelers versus the Bengals. Let's look at quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, he struggled versus the Jags, but otherwise you take away that one week for Ben Roethlisberger, he's been good. He's got 20 touchdown passes, only seven interceptions. He's got eight touchdowns the last three games. He's playing really well right now. Now, he's not going to repeat his numbers the last two weeks, but I would expect against the Bengals, he'll have 250 yards, two TDs as well within reach for him. And then Andy Dalton. Now, Andy Dalton faces the Steelers. who will give the third fewest points to quarterbacks. Uh, now, last week, Brent Hundley threw touch three touchdown passes versus the Steelers. In the last four games, the Steelers have given up uh, yardage and points to quarterbacks. So even though they're playing really well, their defense, they've shown some vulnerability the last few weeks. Now, since uh, week two, um, you look at Andy Dalton, he really struggled the first two weeks. But since week two, he's played really well. In fact, since week two, he's had 18 touchdown passes, only four interceptions. So I would think that you could start him. It would be a fair start this week, not a great start. But I think Andy Dalton would be a guy that you could trust. Uh, start Le'Veon Bell. Don't need to tell you about that one. It's no brand new. Start him every week. Now, Mixon last week. Surprise, everybody kind of had his coming out party. Had a 100 yards rushing. Looked great. Had a yards per carry of over five. Before that, it's been a brutal year. So, uh, can you start this guy? Well, one, he's the go-to guy for the Bengals there. They're going to give him the ball. It's his team at this point. He does get the goal line carries, and he's using the passing game. So, for that reason, I would say you could start him, but you need to temper your expectations. The Steelers are good against the run I would say he kind of falls into your running back three category. As far as wideouts go, A.J. Green, you need to start him every week. And Antonio Brown, you need to start. Um, I would probably sit all others. Juju Smith-Schuster is questionable, and Brian has been great. LaFell has been great, so I would sit the other guys. Um, I would sit both tight ends, and I would start Boswell, but sit Bullock in this game. And I would start Pittsburgh's defense, but I would sit the Bengals' defense in this one. So that's a lot of information to cover. If you have any specific questions, feel free to put them on the bottom of the video. God bless. Thanks for watching our videos. Take care. Have a wonderful week 13.